volunteers. Amen. Amen. Well, I have talked enough. It's not my turn to talk this morning. I'm excited to have Tim and Katie Bennett with us this morning and uh, excited to uh, have them come and minister. Would you welcome them this morning as they come? Praise the Lord. Isn't it fun to be a part of a group of believers that we just don't sit back? We, we sometimes even by force, but we we portray the gospel of Jesus Christ and a night that is otherwise designated in this world to celebrate death and darkness and gloom and destruction. I got to tell you, there was a shining city set on the hill over there behind the senior center last night, and as over a thousand people came through. Actually, this morning, Pastor Kathy trumped us, and you know she's a little bit more shy than both of us. She said twelve hundred to fifteen hundred is what she. Said said i believe her so uh, yeah and plus women are always right is what i've been told too so so we're just so blessed by that over 350 smiley face cookies from eaton park were given out last night over 400 little hug drinks uh were given out last night over 50 gallons of hot chocolate 400 bags of popcorn over 500 bags of cotton candy uh, over a thousand dollars worth of candy was given out last night uh, and then uh, all the people that, that raised their hand to receive Jesus we did uh, four different presentations uh, of the gospel throughout the evening as people kind of filtered through and every time there were 15 to 20 people that raised their hand to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior last night in Mount Morris Pennsylvania come on somebody that's worth more than a golf clap on a Sunday morning isn't it what a good God we serve. And it couldn't be possible without you folks. Pastor John message, or mentioned uh, 50 volunteers from our church and, and the Methodist church. They, they got together. Even some local businesses uh, chipped in to help us out. L&T Supply Company and Forker Contracting and the Joe Pyle Auction Company. We're just so thankful that our community can come together. And in a day and age when everybody thinks that doom and gloom and, and all the world is about to end, I got news to you. The story is not over. The hope of Jesus Christ still reign supreme in our community. Amen. What a wonderful God we serve. So uh, we're actually going to sing a song. We, we recruited some extra help this morning. Uh, aren't they cute and beautiful up here? Look at them. I feel, you know, they're, they're going to give one of these in, you know, to this morning as we sing. No, Robin's got some new hips. She's been wanting to try those things out, uh, but oil can, oil can, but <laughs> I always I have a reference to the Wizard of Oz in every message for some reason. I don't know why that happens. But uh, this morning, I, I want to encourage you today. Let's not let this be a spectator thing. I know uh, most of you know me. If I haven't got to meet you before, it's nice to see you. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm born and raised here and everything. But let's not allow this to be like a spectator thing where you're kind of down there and we're kind of up here. Let's join together, much like what we did last night in the basketball court. Let's join together our hearts and our faith. What a wonderful atmosphere of worship this morning. How, you know, it, it, you can't always go by feelings and by senses and all that kind of stuff. But but how many of you today, you could sense the presence of God in his house today. What a wonderful God we serve. Let's, let's continue in this wonderful atmosphere of worship this morning. Yeah. <laughs> when the solid ground is falling down from underneath my feet. Between the black skies and my red eyes, I can barely see. When I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family, I can feel the rain reminding me. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the world, you guide my soul. You are Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Mm, yeah. When my hopes and dreams are far from me and I'm running out of faith, I see the future that I picture slowly fade away. And when the tears of pain and heartache are pouring down my face, Find my peace in Jesus' name. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guide my soul. You are Lord of the anchor. When my sails are torn, your love surrounds me. In the eye of the storm.
me go and I just don't know how I'm gonna make ends meet and I did my best now I'm scared to death I might lose everything and when a sickness takes my child away and there's nothing I can do my only hope is to trust in you yes trust you Lord in the eye of the storm you remain Control. In the middle of the war, you guide my soul. You alone are the anchor. When my sails are torn, your love surrounds me. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guide my soul. You alone are the anchor. When my sails are torn, your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're so thankful to be here. Uh, I did want to say a big thank you to Pastor John and Pastor Jen for uh, letting us be here today and uh, the opportunity to partner uh, with my home church. I always get such a kick out of that and uh, be able to stand uh, in a basketball court that I grew up playing in last night. And I could even see the house that I grew up in just over the ridge that way. I mean, Montine, right? You were my neighbor, uh, you know, and don't tell anybody any of the things you know, but, uh, you know. It's, it's so fun to be standing in a place uh, and, and portraying the gospel of Jesus Christ that is often forgotten. We tell our volunteers every time, and you guys, you can vouch for this, every time we gather together, we gathered those 50 to people together last night before people started showing up. And we just wanted to let them know that, that, that our community, you know, sometimes Mount Morris is, is oftentimes forgotten. We're off the beaten path. Uh, you know, uh, there was an old uh, Pentecostal preacher that did the Revival Time radio back in the day. And uh, he said if, uh, uh, if he were to miss the rapture, he was coming to Mount Morris because he knew the Antichrist would never find him here. You know, uh, but halfway funny. Uh, but. You know, sometimes we're often forgotten about off the beaten path, a little community, just about 800 people live in the town and about 1,800 live in the township of Perry. Uh, but uh, sometimes we're forgotten about. And last night, we let them know. You Sometimes folks kind of say, you know, isn't it a little bit overkill, you know, $1,000 worth of candy, you know, uh, uh, two big inflatables, cotton candy, popcorn hugs, and all this stuff. And just, I mean, really, we go overboard. But we do it intentionally because we want people to know they matter to God. You say, well, God can't use a Reese cup. Listen to me. If God can use something like me, he can use a Reese cup. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so I'm just so thankful that we have a community that comes together to portray the light of Jesus Christ in a lost and dying world. I think Pastor John is going to come now. I'm trying to, I don't know if I'm, am I stalling long enough? I'm kind of doing my thing. I, I guess I could have done some of the illusions I did last night, but Amen. Thank you so much, Tim. I tell you, there were many that as they were leaving, they were really just truly taken back by, by the fact that, uh, that people would come, Bennett Ministries and Mount Morris United Methodist Church and our church would come together and, and offer something like that for free. And uh, you know what? Freely we have received, freely we need to give. And um, it is important. Some may have other feelings about uh, the particular holiday, as, as Tim, you know, alluded to the fact, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, you know, of the idea of Halloween, but what a, what a tremendous opportunity to shine the light of Jesus Christ in an otherwise dark celebration, and uh, we had the opportunity to last night. There were many, many lives that were touched by the gospel of Jesus Christ and the love of people. Don't ever think, I know some volunteers come and they feel like maybe they didn't accomplish a lot, but just by you being there, working the games, just greeting people as they're coming through, really genuinely doing that, uh, it really goes a long way, more than you realize. And we're just going to keep planting seeds, seed after seed, until the harvest comes. And we're believing for that harvest. We can't expect a harvest unless we're planting seeds, right? Amen. Ushers, are you ready to come? We're going to receive a love offering for Tim and Katie for Bennett Ministries. As I shared earlier, you know, the, the Bible tells us that we are to provide for those who earn their living from the gospel. And Tim and Katie are full-time in, in ministry, 
And uh, they, uh, unlike uh, many pastors, they have to acquire their own health insurance for their family. Uh, they have to take care of all of those type of needs. And uh, we want to be a blessing to them and, uh, and encourage them. And uh, this is their home church. So let's uh, uh, just really, truly extend um, just some extra seeds into the kingdom. Let's do that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to partner with Bennett Ministries. Lord God, thank you so much for Tim and Katie and their family. Lord, they are truly a blessing, Lord God, to many of us, Father, and, and uh, we want to be a blessing to them. We want to continue to stand behind them, Lord God, and encourage them. But Lord, we also, in a tangible way today, want to bless them through our gifts, through our finances, Lord God. And we are sowing seeds into your kingdom and into their lives, oh God. And we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Tim to come back as you're giving this morning. And would you give me your attention and open your hearts to the Holy Spirit this morning? Thanks, Pastor. Thank you. Love you, man. Praise the Lord. Well, we do want to... Uh say a big thank you for your giving we don't take that lightly at all whatsoever uh, you know i know many of you uh kind of know a little bit where our family we're going through some transition right now and some direction and what the lord has for us to be doing and i don't mean that we're coming off the road i actually mean we're going on the road more than what we have in the past uh we've kind of structured our family before that uh i would kind of stay home a little bit and only go out so often and we'd turn some things down and, and try and space our, our traveling out uh because of our kids we have four wonderful, uh, lovely children. I love my kids to death. Uh, you know, Emily just turned 13 uh, a week ago. Uh, Katie turned uh, a week ago. Uh, no, oh, Thursday. I can't remember, honey. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, you know, Emily just turned 13. Josiah is 10. Hudson is six. Josiah is nine. Hudson six. And Ariana is two. Hey, you got four kids that keep track of them and tell me if you know. You just come on. Uh, but uh, I'm just lucky I know what side of the bed to get up in the morning. Uh, I, but I love my kids to death. And so I did my best to kind of, you know, space my travel out to only, you know, to, so I could be there. Because when we first started traveling full time, when we left our, our, our station of ministry where we were pastoring in Pittsburgh uh, and praying and, and just asking God to give me uh, some revelation or get a word, you know, sometimes how many pray for God to give you a word, something you can cling to and, and go forward in your life with? And that's what I was doing uh, where I felt God was wanting us to start traveling. I said, oh, God, you know, I, I want to save the world. I want to do these great things and all that stuff. And and, and the first thing that God ever told me about and really spoke to me about when we were traveling, I remember I was at a pastor's conference at Allison Park Church in Pittsburgh, and uh, all these guys, these great men of faith were there, these heroes of faith that go out and speak and preach to thousands of people and see all this stuff happen, and I'm there, you know, just waiting for God to speak to me, and all these people are coming through, and the great things are happening, and I'm off in the corner praying, and all of a sudden, the presence of God just comes over me, and God tells me that I'm called to be a father first. And I mean, it just gripped me, you know? And at that point, uh, uh, Emily was our only child at that point. And so, uh, little lo and behold, you know, if, uh, three kids later, uh, you know, and uh, my kids are the love and the joy of my life. And, and uh, so we've tried to base our lives to make sure I'm getting my kids launched out on a good foundation. So uh, many of you know, we've, we've taken our kids out of public school and started homeschooling this year for the first time uh, so that we can take them on the road with us more now. And so I'm gonna, we're going to be going on the road a little bit more often than what we used to in the past, doing a lot of different things and uh, actually just got back from Nicaragua last week and some wonderful things that happened there we'll share about and uh, but I'm just so thankful how the Lord is moving things along and we're just so wonderful and, and thankful for the giving that you give we know one day we're going to stand before God and give an account for every dime and penny that the Lord is allowed to funnel through the ministry that he's given to us and so uh, we thank you for that and we're so uh, blessed to be here at our home church in Mount Morse today uh, if you have your Bibles if you could uh, please open them up to the book of 2 Corinthians today 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 today, and uh, we're going to be looking into God's Word tonight at 6 o'clock. We're going to gather back here tonight at 6 o'clock. Now, I know uh, some of us, you're, you don't, you're not Sunday night people. You know, you got the SMO disease. Uh, you know, everybody knows what SMO disease is, right? The Sunday morning only disease. That's the only time you come to church. Well, uh, I want to give you a vaccine uh, right now and invite you to come out tonight uh, to Sunday night church. Uh, what, what happened? What would it be if tonight was the night when you got touched, uh, when, when that 
that miracle finally happened in your life? What if tonight was the night uh, that you've been praying for revival to hit your family and hit your life personally and hit this church and this community, which I would, I would consider that last night was the beginning of an amazing, amazing revival. Uh, uh, come on, when was the last time a thousand people came to a church event and about 80 people responded to receive Jesus as their savior? When was the last time that, come on folks, revival is here. The, God, the move of God is here. The question is whether or not we are moving with him. And, and so let's make every effort. The Bible says, let's make every effort to gather together. Do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. And so uh, tonight I want to invite you to come together at six o'clock. We're going to specifically be praying uh, for miracles and signs and wonders. Uh, it's kind of the, the, the little niche, you know, every preacher kind of has their little niche where uh, the Lord just really kind of gives you a little jolt of something in there. And, and that's where the Lord has just seemed to, to really encourage us in that moment. And even just uh, a week and a half or two Sundays ago, uh, I was praying for a young lady uh, on a Sunday. Actually, it was a Sunday night. See, you get to church on Sunday night. And we were praying together on a Sunday night. And this young lady, I watched the Lord begin to touch her. I asked her to come up on the platform, found out that she was deaf. And, and as we prayed for her, God opened up her ears right in front of everybody. I wish you could have seen that girl's face when she heard for the very first time. And that's the stuff that happens all the time. And it's not because, come on, you know me. You understand what I'm telling you? You know, you know me, Monty. You know me. You know, this has nothing to do with me. This has everything to do with the guy that I represent. And his name is Jesus. Come on, somebody. So when we put aside all of our differences and we gather together, I want to invite you, change your schedule. I called ahead to Roger Goodell and, and had Mike Tomlin put in a good word. I said, listen, could you just go ahead and make this the Steelers' bye week? I'm going to be in Mount Morris, PA. Uh, and can you just go ahead and ask them not to play? And then I went ahead and I called Dana Holgerson. I said, listen, everybody's excited about six and oh uh, but can you just go ahead and lose the game so we can just like uh, realize that the season is over already you know and, and just get on with life because let's be honest they disappoint us all the time right it's just the way it happens hey, you know uh, but uh, ever since major harris it's just been downhill from there uh, uh, but how many of you remember major harris let me see how old i am that's awesome you're older than me great so look this morning, I, let's, let's not, I'm not here today to magnify how bad things are in this world. I'm here to magnify how good God is. I think too often along our lives and in our paths, we get fixated with the circumstances and the things that are around us. But if we would begin to understand that we do not, and this is what I told the kids last night, I did all these different illusions and things and card tricks and ropes and to, put, lit stuff on fire and all that, because, well, it's fun to light stuff on fire. Come on, somebody. Uh, but, you know, we did all those things, and I was teaching them that we can't always go by what we see we have to live by faith and you listen this is a pentecostal church isn't it You know what I'm saying? This is a Pentecostal church. What by that I mean we live by faith. We need to be living by faith. We can't go always by what we see. We have to go by what we know deep down in our heart. Even when the circumstances and the things that surround us dictate otherwise, this world does not shake me from the fact that God is still on the throne. My problems and my issues of this world have not taken God by surprise. He still sits on the on the throne supremely, and He reigns for ever and forever and forever and that will never change and so when we fix our eyes on him and begin to realize hey if this world beats me up God can heal me if they kill me thanks I get to be with Jesus forever and ever and ever you know what an amazing thought process that a whole new way of thinking I wonder if that's what Paul was talking about when he said hey let's let us uh, uh, lay aside all of our difference and let be changed by the renewing of your mind then and only then will we know what the good pleasing and perfect will of God really is for our lives we, we need to change the way we think take captive every thought and tear it down by the power of prayer in Jesus Christ and fix our eyes on him and that's what we're here to do today I, I, I know uh, as I was praying this morning uh, I felt God specifically speak to me today uh, that I was here to encourage you today that I'm here to let you know there is still hope it is not over if God was done with you you would be pushing up daisies but I got news for you you're still breathing the fresh Mount Morse air come on somebody you're still here this morning I got Jesus is still here he hasn't left you he's been walking with you every step of the way I know sometimes it's hard to feel him or hard to hear him or hard to no wonder if you're praying and your prayer just hits off that high ceiling and smacks you right back down in the face hear me 
today. I got news to you. Jesus is sitting right beside you right now. In fact, this is why he sticks closer than a brother. If you've confessed with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that he's God, he's not just sitting beside you. Come on, he's living in you because it's no longer I that lives, but it's Jesus that lives in me. It's in him that I live and I move and I have my being. Let's let Jesus reign supreme in our lives today. Amen. Hopefully I've given you enough time to find 2 Corinthians chapter 2 today. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 starting at verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 starting at verse 12. And if you would, would you stand this morning for the reading of God's word? 2 Corinthians chapter 12 or chapter 2 starting at verse 12. This is what the word of the Lord says on a beautiful, beautiful Mount Morris spring morning. It goes something like this. Now, when I went to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ and found that the Lord had opened a door for me, I still had no peace of mind because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said goodbye to them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. For we are to God the aroma of Christ among those being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we smell like death, to the other... Come on, how many know who I'm talking about right now? Don't look at anybody. To one we are the smell of death, to the other the fragrance of life. And who is equal to such a task? Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ, we speak before God with sincerity like men sent from God. Let's pray. Father, one more time, would you release the power of your written word into our lives? In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, Lord, I ask for every distraction, Lord, anything that would keep us from focusing our attention upon you, Lord, I pray for the perfect love of God to drive out every fear out of this room right now. In the name of Jesus, may faith arise in our souls. May we fully trust in you today, and may we experience a refreshing from the Lord of the encouraging grace of Jesus. Jesus Christ like we never have before Lord I pray for victory in this room right now Lord I pray for victory in the name of Jesus Christ I pray we'd be shaken out of our complacency and we'd stop settling Lord uh, for mediocrity and just kind of finishing the race but God I pray that we uh, an unction and an encouragement would come over us that we would pursue you in such a way to win the race in Jesus mighty name and all God's children said come on Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated this morning. So look, at, again, I want to I want to say this one more time. If you came this morning for bad news, if you came today to hear me tell you how awful I think our political system is, or if you came today for me to tell you how horrible the world has fallen apart, or how terrible the drug problem is in our community, or, or, or you know how jobs are leaving and things are falling apart and all that's happening, listen, you have come to the wrong place. I am not here to magnify how bad this world is trying to give it to us. I'm here to magnify how good my God has been, is, and will always be. We serve a good and a faithful God today. And so I want you to get this deep into your heart today that oftentimes uh, we, end up, we, we, we end up following our eyes. We end up just kind of settling back and assuming, well, it just is the way it is. Well, how many of you think about that? How many of you have said that even recently? It just is the way it is. I guess that's the way it's going to be. We're just going to have to deal with it. Come on, we say that all the time. We just think that's, that's the way. Well, life, that's just everybody thinks that way, so I guess I'm just going to have to deal with it. Our country, that's, it's just the way it's going to have to be. You know, it's just the way it is. I got news to you. The Lord has not given us power and authority to say it is the way it is. The Lord has given us the power and authority to speak things into existence. Even though they are not, we can call them as though they are. We can speak to a mountain, be thou removed, and cast into the sea, and that big ball of dirt has to waddle itself right 
bridling out to the waves. Do you hear me today? We are not called to settle for mediocrity today. We aren't called to settle back and just assume that, that, well, life is the way it is, and we kind of sit on our hands and just kind of wait for things to be over. Uh, uh, Pastor John, I'm too old. It's time for somebody young to take over. I'm too young. It's, I don't have enough experience yet. Uh, somebody older might need to do this because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, you know, hey, it's not, listen to me. I got news for you. If God was done with you, you would be dead. If he didn't have a plan for you, he'd have never let you been born. You hear me today? God has a reason and a purpose for you to live today, and it's the reason to call the victory of Jesus Christ into a lost and dying world. He hasn't come so that you can just kind of almost make it. He has come to give you life and life more abundantly, that you are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. It's time for us to begin to realize we are champions of faith. You are alive in Jesus. This world is doing nothing but trying to kill you, but you're still here. Come on. You're still here. Don't give up now. You are still here today. Push through. Get around all the circumstances and the things. And here, uh, uh, the apostle Paul, he, he comes in and he says he went to Troas to preach in verse 12, the gospel of Christ, and found that the Lord had opened a door for him. But he said, I still have no peace in verse 13. Because I did not find my brother Titus there, so I said goodbye to them and went on to Macedonia. What happened with Paul? He was disappointed. How many, listen, God led him there. He just said God led him to Troas. It wasn't that that Paul was working in the flesh. It wasn't that Paul made a mistake. Paul, listen to me, God had led Paul to Troas. And when he went to Troas, what ended up happening? Paul was disappointed. Because, hey, hear me today, we think that when we follow God, everything is going to be great, there aren't going to be any problems, everything's going to come easy. Listen to me, Jesus said the exact opposite of that. He said, in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Listen to me, Paul was, he, he was, he was, he was disappointed. Things didn't work out the way he thought they should. And then he said he just went on to Macedonia and continued to search for his brother Titus. And you're saying, what are you getting at today? How many of you have ever been to a circumstance that you know God had led you into it? You knew God had asked you to do that, but for some reason, you still experience disappointment. Come on. There's three of us in the room. Bless God, I'm relating to two of you today. Listen to me. Hear me. I don't know about, maybe you must have a perfect life, but life is oftentimes disappointing. Come on, somebody. This is a reactive thing today. If you're Pentecostal, just give me an amen every once in a while. Let me know I'm I'm talking about Jesus and not the devil. Come on. Hear me today. I, I want you to understand, sometimes life is disappointing. It is not easy. Life isn't easy. It's time for us to realize that we are going to deal with problems. But oftentimes, Pastor John and I know, listen, this is probably why I'm an evangelist and you're a pastor. Because people, I bet, come and sit across your desk. You know, people come and ask me for advice and, you know, want me to counsel them and all that stuff, you know. And if all of you know me, that's a bad thing to ask me to do. But they'll come for advice and they'll just tell, oh, Pastor John, everybody hates me. Nobody loves me. They all want me to, they all want me to die. Nobody wants to listen to me. Nobody cares. My family left me. My people left me. You know, I I lost my job, I lost this, my dog died, my trailer turned over. You know, we, we get all these things, and we just keep going on and on about how awful everything is. The whole world hates me, Pastor. Listen, I'm, I'm not minimizing, again, I want you to understand, I'm not minimizing your problems. I'm maximizing the goodness of God. Who gives a rip if the whole world is against you? Come on. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the whole world. It's time for us to put on the mentality, disappointment may come, but we need to persevere through disappointment. We can't give up just because it didn't happen the way we wanted it to happen. We can't give up just because the results didn't come in. I got news for you. It's not our job to bring the results. It's our job to give opportunity. And I've learned that for sure as I preach. And I've been traveling now full time for the last 10 years and been a lot of different places and, you know, and, and been in different countries and different things. I've seen God do amazing things. But I got news for you there's times where I preach my guts out. And people look at me just like you're looking at me right now. <laughs> you know, and nothing happens. How many know what I'm saying tonight? You've worked hard. Come on, how many, you know, Royal Ranger and, and, and girls ministry leaders, Sunday school teachers, you studied your lesson hard, you did your best to get it all together, and you show up, and there's one demon-possessed toddler sitting in your classroom. How many know what I'm talking about? 
We do all these things. We work hard. We think God has called us to do this and that and all that's happening in and around our lives. But disappointment comes. Life doesn't always work out the way we think it should. And thank God for that. Because God's plans are way better than mine. I'm not called to have this thing figured out. One of my favorite scriptures in all of the Bible is Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in God with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. That means you're not going to have this thing figured out. But in all your ways, even in the disappointments of life, in the victories, in the disappointments, in the ups and the downs, acknowledge that he is the Lord. I am not God. He is. I need him. And when we declare our dependency on God, God declares his independence on us. And, he, and that's when he makes our path straight. When we say, God, I need you, he says, yes, you do. And he pours himself into us. Do you hear what I'm saying today? Life is disappointing. Things are going to come. It's not always going to be easy. That pink slip might come. Uh, friends might turn. Family might even run away from you. And I, listen, I know I have a lot of family here today. I'm so thankful that I have a good family that prays for me on a regular basis and all that happens and they're so encouraging. And I, I love uh, my church family here. Many of you have known me. You know, some of you were my Sunday school teachers or Royal Rangers. You know, I flunked out of Royal Rangers because of Rodney over there. You know, so I broke the straight arrow and all that stuff. Uh, and I did, all the, I did all those things. Actually, you were my straight arrow teacher now. I'm thinking about it, weren't you? You look cute in that big red vest. Listen, we, we, I'm thankful for all that. But you know what? Sometimes people, they just don't get sometimes what God has asked you to do. You know, and all the time people, they, you know, they'll say, Tim, when are you going to settle down? And by that they mean... They look at me, and they look at my situation. I have my beautiful wife and four wonderful kids. I'm raising four kids out of a suitcase and hotel rooms. And I have no idea what I'm getting paid week to week. When are you going to settle down? I got news for you. I'm just getting started. You hear what I'm saying? I, uh, God, when God gives you uh, something to do, it has nothing to do with the results. We are to persevere through disappointment. I've been so blessed. I know when we first started traveling 10 years ago, I figured by now I'd have my own television network, you know. I would have written 20 books by now. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'd have had a limo drop me off this morning. You know, Chauncey would have opened the door and said, good morning, Reverend Bennett, you know. And, and would, it would have given me a mint on my way in. You know what I'm saying? But life feeds us disappointment from time to time. But you know what? I'm still at it. I'm not giving up on God because God has never and he will never give up on me. And if you're in that circumstance, in that situation, that you know God has called you to do something or he's put you in a specific place, do not give up when disappointment comes. Listen, it's not time to run. It's time to dig in our heels and push forward. I am not giving up on Jesus this morning because his love is never ending. And he clears for me more than what I could ever imagine. And even if I mess up, he's big enough to fix it. That's the God I serve. We have to persevere through disappointment. You say, what does it mean to be a champion of faith? Listen, we gotta learn like a champion. It's learning like a champion. Learn from the disappointments. Don't allow a disappointment to be a stumbling block. Use it as a stepping stone. I'm not going back there again. You hear what I'm telling you today? Sometimes things will happen. You know, they'll give you a promotion. They'll take it away. Uh, they'll, they'll, uh, you get a job, and then a month later, it gets right away. You know, all the different things that happen in and around your life, you feel like all of a sudden you've arrived, and things are finally, things are finally smoothing out, and then all of a sudden, boom, that big pothole hits in the road, you know? Don't give up. Learn the lesson to look ahead for those potholes. Turn the wheel, baby. You know what I'm saying? Learn from the lessons that God has allowed us to learn. That's the amazing thing about it, because here's the deal. Some of us have dealt with disappointment. Maybe you've dealt with the loss of a child. You've dealt uh, with, with people turning on you. Maybe you've, you've, you've dealt with a sickness, or you've dealt uh, with divorce, or you've dealt uh, with pain, or you've dealt with debt, and the different things that you've, you've dealt with. Listen to me today. Here's the thing. Why do you think God allowed you to go through those things? 
because there's other people going through them and you can minister to those folks. You can say, you know what, I've been there and this is how God ministered to me and it gives people hope. That's what a champion does. It makes other people better. You know, the best players in all of sports, you know, I'm a big hockey nut. I, I, I love, I love watching hockey. I love the pens. I love the whole thing about it. You know, I get so excited around hockey season, you know, and, and watching Sydney, I think Sydney, I mean, Sydney Crosby, come on somebody, best hockey player on the planet. I mean, just, just phenomenal. I, look at that. It's the best amen I got all day, Pastor. Love Sidney Crosby, you know. My wife was clapping because she thinks he's cute. Uh, but Actually, I do too. But hear me today. He's not the best player because he scores the most goals. He's the best player because he makes everybody else on the ice better. Share your experience of what you learned. When you persevere, it encourages other people to persevere. Persevere through that disappointment. Learn like a champion today. And Paul goes on to say in verse 14, but thanks be to God. Come on, somebody. I'm looking for some but thanks be to God Christians in the house this morning. But thanks be to God, despite the disappointment, despite the failure, despite the shortcomings, despite things didn't happen the way I wanted them to happen, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads the knowledge of the fragrance of him everywhere. For we are to God the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are the smell of death, to the other the fragrance of life. And who is equal to such a task? Unlike so many we do not peddle the word of God for profit but on the contrary we, we speak Christ for, with God with sincerity like men sent from God so what are you getting at today let's be a but thanks be to God Christian let's be a but thanks be to God Christian you say what are you talking about let's not just persevere through the disappointment but let's praise through the declaration of the goodness of God today again one more time we are not called to talk about how horrible the world is we are called to talk about how good God is why do you think people stop coming to church because they get enough of the world out there we're not here to give the world. We're here to give the word and the hope of Jesus Christ. Let's stop magnifying how horrible it is. I am sick and tired of hearing Christians moan and grovel and complain about our political structure. I'm so tired of it today. You know what? Here's the thing, folks, and I, I don't know if you realize this or not, but our nation has not changed. It is the same United States that was birthed in 1776 is the same United States today. And I know many people want to want to uh, complain and maybe uh, disagree with me in that but I'm telling you this worldly nation has been a worldly nation since 1776 all the people that we say were great Christian founders were really a bunch of pagans that were following their own selfish desires it had much, little to do with God and much to do with money but here's the deal folks I don't think our nation has changed I think the church has changed we have fallen away from the standards of God's holy word. And we have been, we've decided because there's so many more people in the world and there's so many things happening that we're just going to have to deal with it and it is the way it is and we settle for mediocrity. This is not what Paul says. Paul says, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession. You are in the triumphal. You know, I, I, listen, last, uh, last summer after the Pens won the Stanley Cup, baby, you know, I got news to you. Well, I, I remember back in 09, uh, whenever they, when, when Sid won his first cup in, in 09, Sidney Crosby won his first cup, just a young little kid, and they won it in Detroit. I mean, Hockey Town, USA. They won it in Detroit, and they go up, and they give Sid the Stanley Cup. Listen, Sid didn't take the Stanley Cup, and when he took it, and just like kind of, yeah, uh, we won. You know, kind of drug it around on the ice behind them. Listen, if God's given you the victory, let's not drag it around on the ice behind us. You hear me today? Let's lift it up good and high. Come on. Let's be a but thanks be to God Christian who always leads us into triumphal procession. And here's the deal, folks. People that are not godly, you know, these, these, these pharisaical Christians that come into church and want people, everybody else to be as miserable as they are, they hate this. Come on. They hate this. When people succeed, they hate it. You don't believe me? Think about this. I want you to think about it. We're talking about politics. Let's talk about politics for just a second. Watch this for just a moment. In 2000, everybody loved George W. Bush. 2001, everybody loved him. Right? 2008, everybody hated him. 2000, you know, uh, Barack Obama gets elected, but all second coming. Everybody loved him. Guess what? Everybody hates him now. 
Because here's the deal. When people succeed, they hate it. Because it reminds them that they've settled for mediocrity. I'm not settling for mediocrity anymore. I'm not settling for mediocrity anymore. Let's lift high the banner. I'm not saying that I'm a champion and I win and how awesome I am. Listen to me. Let's lift high the banner of Jesus Christ so that him and only him receives the glory and the honor that is due his name. This has nothing to do with Tim Bennett, John Jackson, the Assemblies of God, or anything else. This has everything to do with the victory that was purchased for me on Calvary 2,000 years ago. Listen, I don't have to die on that cross anymore. I live by the power of the resurrection of Jesus in my life let's be a but thanks be to God Christian listen let, we don't have to die on that cross anymore do you hear me today it was once and for all I surrender my old life to God and he gives me a new life I don't even have to wait three days come on somebody yeah, listen, I know we share in the sufferings of God, and I'm not here to magnify that today. I'm here to magnify how about the eternal glory. I would surmise that this present suffering doesn't come close to the eternal glory of God. I get to enjoy in heaven forever and forever and forever. I am going to be a but thanks be to God Christian. I am determined to declare the awesome prosperity of God in my life. You say, oh, here's that word, Prosperity. And then take it out of the Bible, then throw 3 John completely out of your Bible. Because he's very clear that he wants you to prosper in all ways, your body and you to prosper in all ways, just as your soul prospers. If you say that you're saved by God and that, you're heaven, that, that heaven is now your home, I got news for you. You get to enjoy a little bit of heaven on earth because heaven is simply the presence of God. Do you hear me today? There's a lot of other things that go into it, but I got news for you. I get to enjoy the presence of God right now. At any time, I can call on his name and he is there. And I get to experience and I am made aware of the awesomeness and the majesty of my God. Let's be but thanks be to God, Christians. Let's be, but thanks be to God, Christians. Let's declare today. Let's praise God through declaration. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. And, 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 and uh, my, uh, he was the uh, uh, pr president of, of Central Bible College. God rest his soul. Uh, the, uh, in, in, uh, out in Springfield when I was there in Bible College. And uh, he's had this one little saying, Maurice Lednicki, Dr. Lednicki. He had this one saying that he would tell us almost all the time, and it's, it's been ingrained in me ever since. You will either worship God or you will be critical of those who do. That's sobering. You will either worship God or you will be critical of those who do. That directly contradicts the mentality of our world right now and even in the Christian world. If you don't like that pastor, go to a different church. If you don't like the what they sing, change the channel. If you don't like what's going on, vote them out. If you don't like this, change, you change it. Listen to me. I'm supposed to be, regardless of what's happening in and around my life, oh, but thanks be to God, Christian. You will either worship God or you'll be critical of those who do. That is a powerful word for us today. Let's make sure we are making aware the fragrance and the aroma of God to everyone. Paul says, uh, Paul here says, for we are to God the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we smell like death, to the other the fragrance of life. You so say, what are you getting at today? I'm telling you this. What do people say when you leave the room? When your name is mentioned, is the name of Jesus glorified? And I'm not necessarily talking about reputation because I've got to be completely honest with you. In pharisaical circles, people hate me. And I'm fine with that. In fact, I'm thrilled with that. Because I want to follow Jesus, the guy that threw the Pharisees out of the temple. You hear me? I want to be on his team. I'm not here to make people like me. I'm not here to be the most popular. I'm not here to be in front and receive the glory and honor from me. Hear me today. We've got to understand this for right here and right now. We've got to know that when we leave the room, the presence of God is still glorified. He said we, we're like the fragrance of God. You know, I don't know if you realize this. Your smell, your sense of smell is the strongest of your five senses. It's the most memorable. You can remember smells. Come on, how many think about this right now? Remember the smell of your grandparents' house right now. Come on. 
You remember those things. You remember the different smells. You, you, it's very relatable. I know, you know, I go to Nicaragua three or four times a year, and, and when I got off the plane there a few weeks ago, they opened up that cabin door, and immediately, you didn't have to tell me where that plane landed. You know? Pastor Carl, you know, he went to an uh, uh, end area. He's over there. Oh, you're switching. You, know, you like sit in six different places. You know, I, he, uh, he went to India with us. Uh, that's been a long time ago. Listen, there is a church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania uh, uh, that uh, is mostly uh, Indian folks. It's right by West, uh, uh, West Penn Hospital there. And a lot of the doctors that are Indians actually go to that church. And when I walk into that church, I swear I'm in Mumbai. Because they, they eat all that curry and it just like radiates out of their skin. It just... you. Ooh, Bangalore, India, right there, you know? It's just, it's memorable. You know, I love my wife, I love my wife to death. We've been dating uh, since, uh, well, for a while now. 20 years. 20 years we've been together. We were high school sweethearts and been married now for 15 years and love her to death. And I, 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 but I gotta tell you, I, can, I know when, I, when I'm around my wife because, you know, she has that, that pretty smell. You know, and, and we've been upset about this because Victoria's Secret canceled the, the scent that she's worn for the last 15 or 20 years. You know, Amber Romance. Come on, how many know what I'm talking about right now? I know that smell. When I smell that, I'm like, hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know it's my wife. That's my, hmm, it's my wife. You know, I love my wife. And she's recently, she's changed, trying to find some other things. And they smell great, and it's no problem at all. And I, she says, what do you think? And I just say, well, I hate it. Because <laughs> I want the old one back. You know, I love that smell. I love that smell. And when she leaves the room, I'm like, there, there she goes. You know, I just love her to death. You know, I know that smell. Come on, how many, how many ladies that even though that, that, uh, that, that, that horrible, you know, old spice that you can buy at the BFS for 25 cents, you know what I'm talking about, and, and your husband wears it, and you say you hate it, uh, but when he walks into the room and you smell it, it's like, yeah, here's my husband. Come on, how many know what I'm talking This was your chance right now, time to change aftershave. Come on. It's those different smells. You know, it's, it's those smells. You know that smell. Listen, we are to make the fragrance of God popular around this world. That we are to, listen, what do you think people are saying this morning after we stood out there in the middle of the night and handed out all that candy and all that stuff? I got news for you. There's more good things being said about the people of God this morning in Mount Morris than there's ever been in history. Let's make popular the fragrance of God, the aroma of God. Let's portray the life of Jesus Christ into a lost and dying world. It's time to start acting like a champion. Champions always act like they've won. You hear me today? Champions always act like they won. You know why? Because they can't be a champion unless they've raised the title. You hear me? Here's what I'm trying to tell you today you are not fighting for victory. The victory is already yours. You're fighting from victory. You hear what I'm telling you today? You don't have to scratch and claw your way into success. God has already given you everything you need. You are a success right now in God's eyes. You are already more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. So let's not drag the title of Jesus behind us and try and hide it because we're ashamed, we're worried people are gonna hate us uh, because we're so successful and we're so happy. I I got news for you. Let's take the title and wave it high this morning. Let's lift high the world heavyweight championship of the world that Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. And if you follow him, you can be just as happy as me. Come on. That's the thing. People don't want to be happy because you're comfortable in the gloom. Break out. I dare you. Try it right now. Just go ahead. Stick a smile on right now. I dare you. Go ahead. Look at it. Think about looking around this right now. Just smile a little bit. I hope you brush your teeth. Come on, somebody. Smile just a little bit enjoy life enjoy life enjoy life let's be he's not come to give us life and life by the skin of our teeth he's come to give us life and life by, we are here to enjoy we're not fighting for victory listen i don't have to scratch and claw my way and try and make it all happen he's already given me the victory in jesus name i am more than an overcomer i am more than a conqueror it's time to start acting like a champion of faith today That's what it means to praise through the declaration of the goodness of God. If the musicians can go ahead and come back, you start playing, it'll make me shut up quicker. Hear me. 
We need to persevere through disappointment. Learn like a champion. Praise through declaration. Act like a champion. Lastly, in verse 17, it says, Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On contrary, in Christ, we speak before God with sincerity like men sent from the Lord. I like what the New Living Translation says. It says, you see, we are not like many hucksters who preach for personal profit. (laughs) I love that translation. We're not like many hucksters. (laughs) Come on, how many of you know what a huckster is? You know what I'm saying? You know what a huckster is. I know. I've learned what hucksters are. You know, you say, well, how do you know that? Well, you know, I've, I've been blessed and given the opportunity that, that when I'm home, I'm, I'm able to work at a couple automobile auctions, and I, I, I have to swindle the swindlers. You hear what I'm saying? You know them old hucksters? Come on, come down for this brand new car, $5.99. It can be yours. I have to sell the car to that guy before he sells it to you. You know what I'm saying? Those, you know, and that may be a, a bad analogy if you're your used car salesman, God bless you. But listen, we think sometimes that, that, uh, that, 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 that the gospel is for us to be upfront and have personal gain and profit so people can see us and look what we do. Listen, I'm well aware. God has called me to preach and we sing, and we do all those different things, I'm in front a lot. But I got news for you, none of it happens unless I have that beautiful lady beside me every step of the way. I wish you could have seen all the hard work that went into making last night a success. You have no idea the hours that goes into making all of that happen. And I do my very best And I'm intentional to make sure I do things that nobody else knows that I do. To keep myself in check. Because let's be honest, when we're all sitting out there and we look at the guy up here, it's easy to go, oh, he thinks he's got it all taken to care. Look at him hanging that trophy around, he's a cocky little kid. I guarantee somebody thought that in this room today. And I'm okay with that. Because I've learned I'm not here to please you. I'm here to give you the word of God. And to some, I am the aroma of death. Because it reminds them that they've settled for mediocrity. To others, I am the fragrance and the aroma of the life of Jesus Christ. We cannot be in this for personal profit. If you're one of those people that you think the only ministry that happens is on this platform, I got news to you. About 10% of ministry happens up here. 10%. That might be an overestimate, don't you think, Pastor? Most of it happens. You you only work on Sundays. I think about an evangelist. I don't even have a church to run. I never work. Follow me for a week. Dare you. Follow me for a week. And I'm not here to glorify myself. I'm telling you. We all have our things that we need to do. We are not in this for personal profit. If you're here to become famous, if you're here for some social club to get more popular and all those things, I love you, but can you just find another place to go? Because people are lost and dying on their way. I have friends and family members that do not know the Lord is their Savior, and I do not have time to, to dance around on eggshells to not hurt your feelings. I love you enough to tell you that right now. Listen, we have to proclaim the message of Christ through desperation. Unlike so many, it says, that we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ, we speak before God with sincerity, like men sent from God. How different would our lives look if we lived it like we've been sent from God? We have been sent from God. You say, what are you getting at today? I'm telling you this. We have to finish like a champion. You have to finish like a champion. You know, the World Series is going on right now. And and when the ninth inning comes, you know what what each team does? Whoever's in the lead in the ninth inning, you know what they do? They put their best pitcher in. Because time's short. It's running out. This is the last shot you get. When the fourth quarter comes... Everybody gives their best effort in the fourth quarter. When the ninth inning comes, everybody gives their best effort. You say, what are you getting at? I'm telling you this. We are living in the last moments of the last days here on this earth. 
This is it. We don't have time to play games. We don't have time to worry uh, about, you know, making sure everybody is happy and all the things. I'm I'm not telling, listen, you would be shocked what will get accomplished when no one cares who gets the credit. You would be shocked what gets accomplished when no one cares who gets the credit. I can tell you, a thousand people could come through on a night that is normally designated for death and darkness, and we had over 50 people that gathered together, that gave up their life. I got news. I was so blessed last night. A little Lincoln pack. What is he, 10 years old? Does that sound about right to you? Somebody help me out. 10 years old, little Lincoln Pack, Jamie and Clint Pack's little boy. He said he was not, he refused to go trick-or-treating last night. He was coming to work light the night. And he worked as hard as he could last night for two hours. He stood there and worked ladder ball, handed out candy. I watched that kid be used by, he. if he didn't minister to anybody last night, he ministered to this guy. You would be shocked what gets accomplished when no one cares who gets the credit. Come on, somebody. We're in this thing together. We're all talented in a different way. We, not everybody can get up there and sing and preach. Not every, but I can tell you something. Everybody can get in there and clean a toilet. Everybody can. You know, come on, there's people that can make food. Uh, come on, somebody. One of the best ministries our church has are those funeral dinners. It's an amazing ministry. I, I, the, to minister to families in need. I've been in many times. I've sat in there and I've listened to families talk about, can you believe they did this for us? When Pastor Waters passed away back in the summertime, uh, and, and all those different pastors and all those different, I, I'm not, I'm, I know Pastor John F- folks said the same things to you. They're, I cannot believe your church comes together and does this. What an amazing group of people. Find what you're good at doing and keep doing it. And do it better. Do not settle for mediocrity. Do it with excellence tonight. Mate, you know what? The, the, the sidewalks are going to need shoveled this winter. People are going to be needed to be escorted out of their cars. I would love to. We, come on, ha, most of our parking lot is on a hillside. It's time for the men to wake up and start valeting people that can't park their cars. I mean, things that, things that we think don't matter, I got to tell you, it's those little things that people cling on to and realize, hey, I matter. Look at what they, the time they took out of their busy schedule to do this for me. There's little things all along the way that we all can do. I got news for you. There are little kids running around our town every Wednesday night that have no place to go because we don't have enough Royal Ranger and and girls ministry leaders. I'm begging you. Get involved. I can get away with saying this because you can't fire me. You hear me? I got to preach somewhere else next week. I'm begging you, get involved. I wouldn't be here unless a music teacher from Waynesburg Central was a youth worker and got me reconnected back into church when I was 16 years old. I'm begging you. We are living in the last days. We don't have time. Our community needs to know the Lord. And I don't know if you noticed, but look around. There's a lot of empty seats today. And I don't say that to to magnify how bad it is. I say that to magnify the incredible opportunity we have. Be thankful we have a facility that we can fit as many people in here as we can. That's not a bad thing. That is a good thing. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity. We have to start acting and finishing like a champion. Let's portray the gospel of Jesus Christ and the best. We are sent from God. You're sent from God. You're sent from God to, to rake those leaves. You're sent from God to change those diapers in the nursery. You are sent from God to clean up after a dinner over there. You are sent from God to be a children's worker with Pastor Kathy. You are sent from God to be an usher. You are sent from God to park cars. You are sent from God to be an ear for somebody to talk to. You are sent from God to cook somebody a meal. You are sent from God. You are here for a reason. The plans that God has for you would blow your mind if you would just go ahead and start following Him. Finish 
like a champion, Mount Morris. Finish like a champion. We are not on the losing side. You are an overcomer in Jesus' name because you know what this says. If God be for us, come on. We win every time. We win every time. Come on, would you stand to your feet with me this morning? Hallelujah. Six after. Check that out. Didn't believe me. I saw you had to check. That's a personal inside joke we have with each other. I'm begging you today. I am begging you today. Be a champion of faith. Be a champion of faith. Come on, persevere through disappointment. It's not going to be easy. Learn like a champ. Learn like a champ. If they keep throwing hooks, duck and give them that uppercut right in the gut. Come on, somebody. Learn like a champ. You hear what I'm telling you? Praise through declaration. Act like a champion. Lift high the banner of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. When people see you, they ought to see Jesus. And then proclaim through desperation. Finish like a champion. Give it everything you got, everything you do. Give it everything. Do it with excellence. We are living in the last days. When those last few seconds are ticking, that's when everybody gives it everything they have because they know there's going to be nothing more to give when the clock runs out. The clock is running out. Maybe you're here today and you do not know Jesus as your Savior. I'm not trying to be gloomy or morbid or anything like that. But time's running out. You're not promised tomorrow. You've been coming to church thinking just coming here, you can kind of check it off. Yeah, you did your good deed for the week and you go home and feel like you're a Christian. But this morning there's something graveling and beating inside of you telling you there's more you know the, it's the dumb old evangelist line but man it sure is true coming to church and being inside of a church doesn't make you a Christian any more than standing in a garage makes you a car get involved be active in your faith today and if you're here and you do not know Jesus as your savior you're not sure if heaven is your home if life were to be over when the clock is done and over with if Jesus comes back or, 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 by, or if something happens to us and we, we take our last breath before Jesus comes, when you open up your eyes, will you see Jesus? If the answer is no, or if, even if you're not sure, you better get sure right now. This is your moment. For the last 10 years, this is what I've lived for this moment right here. We've watched thousands of people give their life to the Lord. And it's no different right here in my hometown. If you're here today and you need to accept Jesus as your Savior, I'm not asking how long you've come to church. If you pay your tithe, if you have perfect attendance in Sunday school and have the pens that hang down to the floor, how do you remember those? What I'm asking, are you a champion of faith? You following him or not? This is your moment. This is grace. This is not condemnation. And the reason it's kind of that solemn moment you hear everybody that you can almost hear your heart beating right now because eternity is in the balance. This is huge. The Bible literally says in the book of Luke that the angels of heaven throw a party when just one sinner comes home. They are literally sitting over the grand stands of heaven looking down here, right here, waiting for you to make the best decision so that they can go nuts. And many of you probably remember, and this is why I've done this for the last 10 years, I don't want anybody to bow their head and nobody to close their eyes. Because this is nothing to be ashamed of. This is everything to rejoice in. My Lord and Savior died publicly on a cross, and He got up from the tomb. The least we could do in a room full of people that's going to give you the loudest ovation you've ever heard is express that you need God. I'm telling you, life will never be the same again. This is for you. If you have any doubt, let me confirm it for you right now. Yep, I'm talking to you. Let me rephrase that. The Holy Spirit's talking to you right now. Because you're uncomfortable. You're nervous. You're kind of looking around, seeing what's happening with everybody else. 
this is for you. For you right here and right now. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that your grace and your mercy, Lord, would just overwhelm us right now, that faith would rise in our souls, Lord, that we wouldn't go by what we see and what we know, Lord, that being a, Lord, we, we've done our best to be a good person, and I know we've made mistakes along the way, and God, maybe, maybe we are good people, maybe we, we do good things, but God, doing good things doesn't save us. There's nothing in and of myself that secures my eternity. Only surrendering my life to you, allowing my old life to die so that I can live in your new life. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that everyone that needs to accept you right now, Lord, that their hearts would be softened, and Lord, they would have the courage to respond to the wonderful grace and love of Jesus Christ. Oh God, have your way. In Jesus' name. Every head up and every eye open. If that's you this morning, I'm simply going to count the three, not to trick us or anything like that, but just to bring us to a point of decision. If that's you today and you know you need to accept the love of God into your life, you want the salvation of Jesus, whether it's for the first time or the 50th time, you know who I'm talking to tonight. You're this morning, you know I'm talking to you. If that's you, uh, in just a moment, I'm going to count the three. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. This church is going to go nuts for you as the angels of God begin to throw a party. I'm going to invite you to come. And in just a few moments after that, we're going to stand right here, Pastor John and my self. We're going to pray with you quickly. We're not going to run a marathon. Basically what we're going to do is congratulate you on the best decision of your life. What a good God we serve. Come on somebody. We serve a good and faithful God. If that's you today and you need to surrender to the love of God, come on. If that's you, when I say three, you lift your hand as high as you can. Don't you worry about what anybody else thinks. Nobody else can save you but Jesus. Nobody else could save you but Jesus. I got news for you. This is your day. Today is the day of salvation. What a good God we serve. If that's you, lift it good and high. One, two, come on, you know who you are. Lift it high right now. Three, come on, is there anybody? We'll wait for you. That's it, sir. Come on, is there anybody else? We'll wait for you. Oh, come on, church. Give the Lord a mighty shout of praise this morning. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a good God we serve. What a good God we serve. Listen, if you raise your hand, or even if you didn't and you wish you did, if you can make your way down, that would be awesome. If you can't, we'll come right to you. Can you walk right back that center hall, uh, hallway? That'd be awesome, Pastor John. Come on, would you come? I, wanna, I want, listen to me. We're going to pray together right here. My brother that responded to the Lord, Pastor John and I are going to pray together right now with my friend. God loves you, brother. God loves you. Come on, would you stretch your hands out towards my friend right here and right now? I want everybody in the room, I'd like for you to pray this prayer with me today. Come on, everybody in the room, I want you to pray this prayer out loud. You don't have to say it word for word, but the Bible says we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth. What a wonderful God we serve. What a good God we serve. Come on, pray this prayer with me today. Say, Jesus. I said, everybody say that today. Say, Jesus. Hallelujah. I admit that I need you. I believe that you're God, and I confess you as the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus, that heaven is now my home. From this day on, in Jesus' name. Come on, and everybody said, amen, amen. God bless you. Maybe see. Oh, what a wonderful God. What a wonderful God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look, this might be a little unorthodox or maybe not used to this. And I know it's quarter after 12 and everything, but Pastor John preaches longer than me. You know that. I can say that because I have the mic. I just want to, one time, before we go, as Pastor Jen and the team leads us, and whatever you guys are playing, that's awesome. Go right into it, nice and big. But I want us to gather together for just a moment. And we're going to raise high the banner of Jesus Christ. We're walking out of here champions today. As we begin to sing, just in a closing prayer, we're not going to stay and run a marathon. But I want to gather us together. Because you know what? I know, you know, through, in, you know, I played high school sports and stuff. I, you know, I, I love being involved, uh, be, being with my little girl, Emily. I've coached her, you know, through her softball and her basketball and all that stuff. The thing you do before a game and the thing you do after a game. What do you do? Come on. You huddle together, right? You get everybody on the same page and you let out a little war hoop. You know what I'm saying? Before the game, you do it to let the enemy know 
Victory's already been given. At the end of the game, you do it to let them know you've already won. If they come back, they're going to get the same whipping they just got. You don't believe me? Read what the, what, the, what the armies of Israel did. They sent the worshipers out before, and then they sent the worshipers out afterward to let them know that they raise high the banner of Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession. Come on, let's sing this together. Come on, would you join us together for a closing prayer this morning? Hallelujah. That's it. Just begin to come if that's you. Come on, everybody just step out right from where you are.